The debate has been long argued if teachers get paid a fair amount for the job they do. Granted, some get paid too much, but on the other hand, some don't get paid nearly as much as they should for the quality of work that they do. In the next few years, their pay equation really isn't going to add up. Let me show you how their pay equation is set up now. They get a flat rate for the hours they are required to be at their job, plus seniority, plus their level of education, and they've got a paycheck. This equation is in the process of being changed. Though teachers and quite possibly the people who are creating it are unsure of the final equation just yet, it is believed to be something like this. Teachers will get paid a flat rate for the hours they are required to work, but a large part of their salary will fluctuate with a new teacher evaluation system. Therefore, the paycheck could be a different amount each time. The evaluation procedure will be broken into two different parts. One half of the evaluation will be one done by a principal. This could potentially be a problem because based on the relationship the principal has with the teacher, it could be biased. This part of the evaluation may also include a parent and student satisfaction part. The other half of the evaluation will be based on student growth, which is supposed to be measured by test scores. Now, that's not a problem if the student is smart, but if the teacher is stuck with a low achieving student, that could cause some problems. Since teachers rely on this income to pay necessary bills, it isn't an option to have an anorexic piggy bank. So, in an effort to put food on the table, teachers may participate in unethical practices that can sometimes lead to assisting students on tests. Another way for teachers to get fat piggy banks is for them to teach to the test. This practice occurs when teachers take the pacing guide that was developed by the curriculum team for the district and throw it in the trash. Instead, they take the assessment and cut it up into comprehensible lessons that can be taught directly to the students. This doesn't allow students the opportunity to exercise their multiple intelligences. One teacher commented on the subject by saying that she worries about the validity of a student's success if he hasn't been given the opportunities to develop different multiple intelligences. Students should be able to learn the way that they know best. Modern day achievement tests target few of the multiple intelligences and do not allow use of analytical skills. It can be very frustrating for students who are not good test takers, and to help them, there are techniques teachers relay to students that can aid in the test taking process. So in reality, a teacher is not teaching content but how to play a game. This is a poor use of instructional time. Nowadays, students have knowledge available at their fingertips so they no longer need to memorize things like all of the presidents. Under the new PARC assessment model, students will be able to take raw information, put it through their brains, and apply the information by using critical thinking skills. The new assessment was put into place by politicians who are trying to revolutionize the growth of America's education system. However, the people in charge of education reform aren't necessarily educators who are familiar with classroom environment. Rather than listening to what input educational departments have, the General Assembly is legislating unrealistic changes. They are treating the education system like a business, when in fact, it is not. Teachers don't have a problem with being paid for their quality of work or time spent on their job, but when businessmen try to add student performance into their pay equation, they are experimenting with variables which are beyond the teacher's control. These variables can include genetics, nourishment, socioeconomic status, hunger, environment, and many more. These factors can affect student growth. In each course, a student is supposed to make at least a year's growth, but teachers have yet to develop a sense of what that means. It is difficult for teachers to measure the growth a student has accomplished since achievement assessments are only given at the end of each year. For example, if a sophomore English teacher has a student come into her class at a 6th grade reading level and that student ends up at a ninth grade reading level, she's made three years of growth in that time. However, since the achievement test measures the ability of 10th graders, her freshman reading level still earns her a failing test score. As a result, the teacher is rated poorly and not paid for the quality of work she has done. The solution to the merit pay system would be to rid the education system of it forever. A teacher remarked on the subject and said, Do we have bad teachers? Yep. Are there bad politicians? Yep. Are there bad businessmen? Yep. It's in every profession. 
Based on this statement, one would think that education is being treated like it's a business. Education is not a money-making business, but an avenue to mold the minds of the future. Teachers entered this profession knowing that they were expected to give a quality education to all students instead of seeing them as an obstacle to get salary raises. And that is how it should stay.